Hi, welcome to another video. So, OpenAI just dropped GPT 5.2. We already know about the variants and the reasoning chains. But if you dig into the specific benchmarks they just released, the actual capabilities are kind of wild. Before getting to the benchmarks, let's talk a bit about what this model is supposed to be. Well, technically, this model is supposed to be a successor to the GPT 5.1 model, but for some reason, they have increased the price of this model. It used to be $10 per million output, but it's now $14 per million output, which is basically at the price of Sonnet now. So, this is not the best bet for sure, as it puts the price above Gemini, and it is not very good to see. They do say that it will cost less in everyday usage, since it is good at using reasoning tokens. But for some reason, there's now an extra high variant. So, I don't get all these contradicting things. There's also the GPT 5.2 Pro model that is now available in the API as well. Before looking at my benchmarks, they shared some cool findings that are worth talking about. They ran a benchmark called OpenAI PRs. They gave the model real internal pull requests from their own repositories. It had to check out a branch, modify files using command line tools, and pass hidden unit tests. GPT 5.2 Thinking beat GPT 5.1 Codex Max, which was their previous heavy hitter for coding. They also ran it on MLE Bench which simulates Kaggle data science competitions. The agent gets a GPU, a virtual environment, and 24 hours to build a solution. GPT 5.2 is now the highest performing model on this leaderboard. However, it's not a clean sweep. Here is where it gets interesting. On a benchmark called OpenAI Proof Q&A, which tests the ability to diagnose deep, internal engineering bottlenecks. It actually scored lower than the previous Codex model. So while it is better at generating new contributions, it might actually be slightly worse at digging through logs to find obscure root causes in legacy code. One final detail that is crucial for developers building agents. Instruction following. They found that when you give this model a strict constraint, like only output an integer, it prioritizes that constraint over honesty. If it doesn't know the answer, it is more likely to hallucinate a number just to follow your formatting rule. That is a trade-off you need to be aware of. Overall, the specs imply we have a model that is fantastic at building new things, but might need supervision on deep debugging and strict formatting constraints but these benchmarks are very nitpicked. You only see the improvements over their own previous gen model. There's no Opus, Gemini, etc. in most comparisons here, which makes me a bit sus. So, let's have a look at my benchmarks. I ran it on both non-agentic and agentic benchmarks to get a clearer picture. I also gave it a bit of time in my internal usage, and it's not been a good experience. Let's have a look. So, let's start with the GPT 5.2 model with no reasoning. In the first floor plan question, it fails blatantly. It kind of works. It has its own dark aesthetic, and there are no doors in the map. So, this is a decent generation. Then we've got the SVG panda eating a burger, and it is not good. It's quite a bit wonky. It's very big and it's not a good generation. Moving forward, we've got a pokeball in 3JS, and it is fine. The button is very wonky, but other than that, it looks kind of solid. So, this is good. Chessboard with an autoplay feature is also kind of fine. Obviously, none of them are as great as what Gemini 3 or Opus make. Gemini 3 is like a one-shot genius. So, this model doesn't compare to that at all. After this, we've got the Minecraft in 3JS, and it's atrocious. Very bad. 
majestic butterfly flying in a garden, is really solid. The wings can be a bit wonky at times, but it is still good, and the physics and flying have good animations. CLI tool in Rust is not good, and the Blender script for Pokeball also doesn't work. Similarly, the three normal questions, including the riddle, are a fail. The riddle is something that even small models pass, but for some reason, it gets lost in that. Now, the reasoning variant, especially the extra high variant. So, let's start with the floor plan. In the floor plan, we've got a kind of good generation. There are doors and everything, but there's an issue. It doesn't really make sense. The entrance is not written down, and the structure doesn't really make sense. Like, why would the living room be the size of a pea? It is kind of wonky, but the code is good. SVG of a panda eating a burger is kind of fine. The stomach should have been behind the burger, and it would have been really good. But even after a few regenerations, it just messed up something or the other. The Pokeball in 3JS is also pretty fine. I mean, I couldn't ask anything more from it, apart from maybe a little bit of a natural background. But that wasn't mentioned in the prompt. So, I guess it's good that it didn't do that and adhered to the prompt. After this, we've got the chessboard with autoplay, and it is kinda wonky. The height of each square is not static. It keeps changing based on whether the piece is in a block or not, which is not ideal. And the color of the white squares is the same as the color of the white pieces, which makes them invisible. So, it's not good. Then there's the 3D Minecraft game, and it is pretty bad. It doesn't even work, even after multiple regenerations. Majestic Butterfly Flying in the Garden, however, is extremely good. It is kind of dark-themed, which GPT-5 models prefer a lot. So, it's quite good. CLI Tool in Rust was also really good, and so was the Blender script. For some reason, even on extra high, they don't pass the maths question, but the riddle does get solved. This makes it score the third position on the leaderboard with extra high, which is 9% below Opus 4.5 with max reasoning, and about 35% below Gemini. It does indeed beat 4.5 Sonnet. Another thing is that the speed of GPT 5.2 is quite a bit faster now, which was due for a while now. I guess that might be why the price has also been increased. Also, the non-reasoning model now falls behind the previous GPT 5.1, which is very interesting to see for sure. Now, this doesn't tell you the whole story, because there are a lot of things involved when you are trying to use it in an agentic harness. Gemini 3 starts to fall apart a bit too quickly there. Opus stands the strongest. But what happens with GPT 5.2? Well, let's have a look at the agentic benchmarks. So, I wanted to put them head to head. So, I tested Opus 4.5 and Gemini 3 Pro again on the agentic tests, and I tested GPT 5.2 as well. I tested them on the seven questions. I used Verdant to test Opus 4.5 and Gemini 3 Pro because I've been using Verdant a lot due to their really good agent contraption and the smooth workspaces, which are basically like Git work trees. It makes it much easier for me to spin up the same prompt in the same repo and test different models simultaneously as well. I believe if you are thinking that Cursor's Git work trees feature is so good, then you haven't really used Verdant. It's just really good. They haven't yet integrated GPT 5.2, and I guess they might not do it because they said that the price to performance doesn't make sense to them. But it might also come. I'll pin a comment for when they reach a decision. Anyway, for testing GPT 5.2, I used Kilo Code. It is integrated quite well there and works well with all the reasoning efforts. So, I use that. Now, let's have a look. First of all, I went to Verdant 
and opened up my folder, and then created three new workspaces here. These are basically clones or branches of the project, so it doesn't affect the original one. I can merge them back later if I want. But anyway, the first prompt was for the Movie Tracker app. So I copied the prompt, and first I selected the Opus 4.5 model and then sent it over. I am not using the plan mode here, as I just want to test the one-shot generation options. Similarly, I gave the same prompt to Sonnet 4.5, and then I gave the same prompt to Gemini as well. You can now see them running here as well. While this is running, I created another clone of the project and opened it here in Kylo code. So, I'm just going to go ahead and select GPT 5.2 here, and then I set the reasoning effort to extra high, and then I gave it the same prompt. Now, meanwhile, I can go ahead in Verdant and select the other projects on which I want to test it as well. So, I can just select this Go TUI Calculator app and then do the same thing of creating different workspaces and then giving them the prompt. And they will just go ahead and work on it while the previous prompts are still going on. It's not like I have to open like 5 Cursor or VS Code or Claude Code Windows to get anything done. It's quite good. Anyway, I did the same thing for all the questions, and I also fired up like five windows of VS Code and asked GPT 5.2 to also work on the same thing. Now, they all ran, and let's have a look at all their generations one by one. Let's start with GPT 5.2 on the Movie Tracker app. This actually looks and works pretty well. It still uses the same GPT 5 like design which is not something that I'm a fan of. You can also see the library and Git tracker, as I had asked, which is pretty good. It's not the best in terms of UI, but it is still solid. If we now look at what Opus made with Verdant, then it is much better than GPT 5.2. It looks sleek. Each and every functionality works. When you use it, you feel like you're using a somewhat professional app and it's just really good. One of the best generations. Then, we go to the Sonnet generation, and it is also good. It doesn't show an Explore page. Instead, it leans towards allowing the user to search and then add that to the home page, which is interesting. The UI is pretty good and is pretty solid in usage as well. If we move to the Go to UI calculator as well, then the one by Opus is again the best. You can see that it looks very good. It has good colors. The Sonnet one is kind of wonky. Gemini's one, however, is really good, and it follows a different aesthetic than the other ones, which is very interesting. GPT 5.2, however, is very interesting. And for some reason, instead of making one simple file, it made like five files. It then wrote a whole test suite, and even after that, it had an error, which it went ahead and fixed. It really over-engineers very simple things. Opus and Sonnet just nail this point. They over-engineer where needed, and don't where it's not needed. The UI is also not very good. Moving up, we got the Svelte app, and well, let's start with the best, which is Opus. I mean... Opus with Verdant literally went on for like 20 minutes, and it nailed it on the first try. There's authentication, it uses the DB correctly, you can create boards, they look awesome, and it looks very solid. Such a good model, man. Let's look at the one by Sonnet, and it is also very solid. Looking at this, it is on par with Opus. It works seamlessly on the first try and it shines here. Remember that I'm using the UltraThink variants in Verdant, which enhances the capabilities of these models by letting them run for longer intervals and letting them reason for a lot more time, which makes them shine here. Gemini 3 is kind of bad. I mean, it works, but it looks like it was made in the 2000s. It's pretty bad. GPT 5.2 is also fine.
It doesn't do anything very cool, but it is still kind of good to see that it at least works. Now, we've got the Tari app. The one from Gemini 3 straight up doesn't work. It shows me the default screen and nothing else. So, this is not great. If we look at the Opus one, then it is the best, and it kind of works as well. However, Sonnet and GPT 5.2 just fail in this aspect. So, there's that. For the Open Code and Nuxt app and Gato game questions, Opus passes all of them. Sonnet, Gemini, and GPT 5.2 fail the Open Code question and the Nuxt app question. All of them have a similar generation to each other in the Godot game. So, all of them pass. Now, if we look at the leaderboards, then GPT 5.2 scores the 8th position, which is fine. But considering that GPT 5.2 basically costs the same as Sonnet 4.5, you can get on-par results with Verdant as it integrates Sonnet 4.5, especially with UltraThink, quite well, which makes it really, really good. And if you can afford a bit more, then just jump to Opus, and it's a different class result altogether. If I had to summarize this model in one line, then I'd just say that it's Gemini 3 by OpenAI. It feels very similar to it. When you just talk to it or do one-shot HTML stuff, then it feels really good. But as soon as you start using it in agentic contraptions, it falls apart really fast. I don't really think that I'll use this model. I am using Gemini 3 and Opus 4.5 a lot for front-end and back-end, respectively. So, there's that. I don't think that it is very useful for me, and my benchmarks also think the same. You can check the model out for yourself on Kylo Code as well. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.